Well, hi everyone. This week's cleaning zone is the kitchen. And one of the things I decided to tidy up in the kitchen was this behemoth of a mess, <laughs> which is uh, some of my recipes. Anyway, that's what I want to talk to you about today. So if you are trying to save some of your recipes from analog to uh, digital, stay with me and we're going to talk about how to do that. Well, hi everyone, I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life, where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. And this past week was working in the kitchen for my cleaning zone, and I decided to go ahead and tackle some of uh, the recipes that I have <laughs> in this notebook. Now, um, I'm showing my age here a little bit, but uh, one of my favorite things to do when I was much younger was to go through the magazines and to cut out uh, recipes to save, uh, you know, or people would share copies of recipes with me. And I just thought that was wonderful. Um, and I loved going through those recipes season by season and seeing all the beautiful, you know, ways to make Valentine cookies and great ideas for Easter and you know, um, Halloween uh, treats and Super Bowl treats and all that kind of thing. Uh, these days we have things like Pinterest, so we don't have to keep these kinds of great big notebooks anymore. Um, but there are some family treasures in this notebook that I do not want to throw away. I do not want to get rid of. Uh, in fact, I would like to replicate them for my daughter so that uh, when she is off on her own and would like to use some of our favorite family recipes, she can look them up uh, just like I can. So, how am I going to do all of this? Well, I started doing this, um, let's see, in 2014, <laughs> almost 10 years ago. Uh, in, of course, OneNote, my favorite note-taking, uh, planning, organizing app that I use. And uh, today I want to show you kind of a little bit of that journey and show you how to set up your own uh, recipe notebook or any kind of notebook really for that matter. Um, so anyway, let's uh, put these big books down <laughs> and uh, we'll get into the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Whew, okay, that's better. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's see. People talk to me all the time about using OneNote. And I tell people that I store everything in OneNote. And when I say that, I mean it. I have been using OneNote at least since 2012, um, maybe even before that. But I do have pages that go back that are dated that long. And I started out with what you see here on the screen, which was my personal notebook. That's the very first notebook that I set up in OneNote. And you see across the top, of this notebook, I have all of these different um, categories or tabs that go across for the different sections. So I have one here for stickers, and I have one here for budget, and I have one here for calendar ideas, I have one for car information, and so on and so on and so on. All the way down here, you see this bright yellow one, I have one that I saved for recipes. Now, um, my personal notebook is a place where I dump things when I don't know where else to put them. And so for the longest time I had recipes stored here and I really wasn't sure if I wanted to create a whole recipe notebook or any of that kind of thing. I didn't know how practical that would be for me. So I would just create a section in my personal notebook and store recipes there. So for example, this is a lazy chocolate chip cookie recipe. And you see I have all of the ingredients listed and then the directions. I even have some photographs. I have a link as to where this came from. And then I have a beautiful picture of the finished product. So uh, this is something that I uh, copied off of the internet. Uh, this is not one of my own original recipes. And uh, it's a great way to store them. Why do I like to store them in OneNote? Well, first of all, you can search. Let's say this is cookies. Let's go ahead up here and let's search cookies. And you will see that it starts going through all of the things that have cookies in the title. All right. So I can jump right to those magic cookie bars, uh, cookie exchange information, airy berry cookies, 
chocolate peppermint cookies. I don't have to flip through page after page after page in my big behemoth of a notebook. I can simply uh, go through here and type in an ingredient. Let's say I wanted to do uh, salads. All right, same thing for salad. I can go through and find all of these different places where I have ambrosia five cup salad, BLT salad. Uh, you can even see they're in um, different uh, notebooks. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, they can, they can be found. So I love the fact that I have all of these uh, in the same place, you know, in OneNote and they can be searched. Okay. Okay. So back to those lazy chocolate chip cookies, you can see here in my personal notebook that I started, you know, just throwing recipes in here. Here's a pumpkin spice, um, cake. And if you look on down my pages, you see, I started organizing them a little bit. Well, here are some spring recipes and I just put a page holder in there that says spring. Yes, I could do a subcategory, but this was back in 2014 when that kind of thing didn't exist. Actually, this says 2010 and subcategories didn't exist in OneNote at the time. But you see, I have some spring recipes over here. I have some summer recipes. So avocado chicken salad uh, is one of my favorites. Then I have uh, scrolling on down, I have some fall recipes. Autumn kissed the summer with the softest kiss. <laughs> I think that's cool. So here's a cranberry white chocolate cookie. Here is a Mexican corn chowder, all these kinds of things that you might want to make in the fall. All right. Then I have winter and so on and so on. So people have asked me in the past, how do you know when it's time to start a new notebook? Um, and I will tell you right now that for me, the time to start a new notebook is when you start making all of these subcategories within the, in the section that you have, or you have more than 20 or 30 items. For me, that means it's time to make a new notebook. So that's exactly what I did. So I went from this recipe section here and I created a new notebook, which I call the Read Family Recipes. Okay. So when I jump over to the Read Family Recipes, uh, you can see that this was a notebook that I created um, and I have all of these tabs across the top. Very much like you would see in a three ring binder um, um, recipe book that you might have different dividers for. Okay. So in the very front here, I have some general information that might be different forms of measurements for uh, different things that might be uh, things that you can substitute in recipes for you know, sour cream or, or buttermilk or that kind of thing. Um, and then I have a section, uh, I start with appetizers and go on to soups and salads and sandwiches and entrees and side dishes, those kinds of things. Okay. So let's look at appetizers. Now you'll notice one thing that I did here in appetizers is I have my tabs as different colors. You'll also notice that I have my page color the same color that matches my tab color. If you didn't know that you can change the page color in OneNote, let me show you how you do that. All you do is you need to come and click somewhere on your page and then under your view menu up here, you can go across to page color. There's a drop down menu there where you see all of the colors that are available. If you hover over them, they will tell you what the colors are. So there's blue, but my section happens to be pink. So I'm going to search around until I find magenta, which is a form of pink. And that's the color that I'm going to make the background of this page. Now, if you think that's too matchy matchy and it blends in with your pages on the side, you could do a contrasting color. I could do yellow. So the recipe would stand out and the other pages would stand out. It's personal preference, whatever you would like to do, or you can do no color. It doesn't matter. If you're somebody who frequently prints your recipes, you may want to do no color on your page so that the recipe, um, you know, doesn't take up a lot of ink if you're going to print it. I tend not to print my recipes. I tend to leave them here and either use them off of my phone when I'm cooking or my iPad, something like that. Okay. All right. So let's go back and add that page color because I like the way that looked. And I wanted to talk to you about a couple of different things here. 
how do you get these recipes into your recipe notebook? Well, this one right here you can see is a, actually a printout, all right? And it is a recipe uh, that is copyrighted down here by uh, 15spatulas.com and there is a link to the recipe right there. And what I did is I found this online and you know when you go and it says, you know, jump to the recipe and then there's an option where you can print the recipe. Well, instead of printing it to my printer, what I do is I choose OneNote as my printer and then it prints it into OneNote. And when I do that, it comes up and says, you know, what page do you want to put it in or what section do you want to put it in? Actually, let me show you this process. Bear with me just a minute. So what I did is I went onto Google and I came up with this uh, quick search for a cheesecake recipe because I love cheesecake. And I found this recipe here. And when you get, uh, you know, you can see the whole blog post if you want, or you can jump right to the recipe. All right. When it comes down here to jumping to the recipe, you see the recipe here. She actually has a video. She has ingredients, all of those kinds of things. There's the instructions and the cheesecake. Okay. Now, what I could do is I could copy this whole thing if I wanted to, but what I want to do is I usually go up here to print. So I'm going to click on print and it says, uh, it shows me a great uh, layout of the recipe. So I can include the recipe image. I can include any notes that it has and I can include nutritional information. Now I would tell you with uh, cheesecake, I may not want the nutritional information because knowing how many calories one of those slices is, I may not want to make the cheesecake, but in this case, for purposes of the video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to leave those in there. Okay. So I go up here to the word print. I say print and it comes up with my printer choices. I can choose my brother printer. I could save it as a PDF. I could choose other printers that I have, but I want to print it to OneNote desktop. Okay. So I'm going to choose that one. I want all of the pages and I want them in portrait. Uh, layout as opposed to landscape and I want them in color as well. Okay, then I'm going to go down here simply to the print button and hit print. All right. Now I don't know if you can see this, but my little one note uh, on my bar down here is flashing at me. And so when I click on that, it's going to come up and say, where do you want to insert the printout? The printout is the recipe for the cheesecake. So I can go through here and I can choose any of the notebooks that I have, but I want it in my Reed family recipes and I want it in my cakes section. Okay. So I'm going to click on my cakes section and I can see that I have other cakes there, but the cakes section will be good. So if I say, okay, then it jumps right to my cake section gives me the printout and here you see the recipe right in front of you. All of the directions, all of the notes, all of the uh, nutritional information, everything. Okay. It's that simple. Now all I need to do is go up here and change this to a title that best fits. So the best cheesecake recipe. Okay. And there it is. It was that simple. So printing directly into OneNote is a great way to get your recipes in there. Okay. Let's jump back to appetizers and see some other ways you can add recipes to your recipe notebook. Okay. Here, what I did is actually, uh, I want to show you on this page that this was a recipe that my husband actually added to the recipe notebook. I know that because I have the authors showing here. And if I hover over this, I can see that my husband put this recipe in this notebook in 2014. So it's been there a while, but these two cheese straws are one of our favorites. And this looks like he simply copied and pasted this recipe from somewhere on a website. So much like we were looking at the recipe uh, for the cheesecake, rather than actually printing it, you know, you simply could copy it and paste it. All right. 
So that's another way, copying and pasting, to get recipes into your recipe notebook. This one simply was, I sat down at the screen and started typing because I had this little tiny scrap of paper, uh, much like one of these little tiny scraps of paper, right? And I wanted to put that into my notebook. So all I did was sit down at the computer and start typing, okay? I don't have any pictures to go with it. It's not fancy, but it works for, when I need, for what I need. Same thing here with the um, candied pecans using the oven method. And there's a picture of my uh, finished pecans. And then I have another recipe here that is candy pecans. And you can see from this one that I printed it out, just like I showed you, okay? All right, now there's a recipe here that looks a little strange to me. And the reason that it looks a little strange is, is because part of it is cut off but I did this really quickly because I wanted to show you um, a way to set up new sections and a way to move recipes. So this is a recipe that I have for making my own coffee liqueur because Kahlua is one of my favorite uh, evening beverages. Um, and so I have this recipe that I love to use um, and it's actually in this big behemoth of a notebook that I have. And the way that I got it into OneNote is I took my iPad and I went up here to insert and I went over to pictures and it, I used the from camera link, which is right here. And with my iPad, the camera came up and I was able to shoot a picture of that recipe in my recipe book and it inserted it directly into OneNote, okay? Now, because it's a beverage, I don't know why it's in the appetizers section, so uh, I need to fix that, right? We need to take care of that. So from my camera, being able to get that recipe uh, right into my notebook is really, really handy. But like I said, we need a new uh, section for this. So if I look at all of my sections up here, I even have a few more here in the dropdown, I do not have a beverage section. So I'm gonna go up here to this little tab that says create a new section, and I'm gonna click on that, and I can title this one, Beverages, okay? And I can make it whatever color I want. Uh, I can change the color of that section if I want. Let's go with tan for beverages because Kaluan cream is tan. And that's one of my favorite evening beverages. So what I can do now is I can go back here to my appetizers and click on my coffee liqueur and I can scroll down here to move or copy. And when that comes up, it says, hmm, where do you want to move or copy this to? Well, I don't want it in cakes where we put the cheesecake. That wouldn't work. I do want it down here in beverages. So I'm going to highlight beverages. I'm going to click on move because I don't want it in my appetizers anymore. I want it in its own uh, special place. So I'm going to say move. And then you see that disappears from my appetizers. And when I click over to beverage, there is my coffee liqueur recipe. Okay. All right. Now it still has that pink page background from being in uh, appetizers, but that's easy enough to change. View, page color, go with tan and we're all set, okay? All right, so, so far we've talked about uh, when is it appropriate to set up a new notebook, and for me, that's when you've got 20 or 30 things that you need, you know, that may be scattered all over the place that you need to consolidate in one place. We've talked about setting up different sections. Uh, in this case, the notebook sections kind of go along with the types of meals that you might be preparing. We've also talked about a couple of ways uh, to get recipes into your notebook. You can print them from the web, uh, printing directly into OneNote. You could sit down and just type them in. Uh, you could take a picture of an existing recipe that you might own. Um, and th one of the reasons that I love to do that is some of the recipes that I have, you know, um, are my mother's handwriting. So, you know, for example, this recipe here um, was written by my mom and I just, you know, when, when I see her handwriting, it just brings back memories for me. And, you know, she's been gone almost 20 years now. And seeing those uh, recipes when I go through my recipe books 
it really brings comfort to me. So I like that and uh, I want to keep that. Um, so taking those photographs sometimes is a way to preserve that special memory uh, with some of these um, family recipes that I have. Sorry, I get a little sentimental when I talk about my mom. One of the things that I wanted to talk about as we move on to our soups recipes section is, uh, again, you know, I have the page color to match. You can, or you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But one of the things that I want to talk about is once you have a number of pages within a section, uh, one of the newest features for OneNote desktop is this little button way over here in the corner of add pages. And you see it says sort pages. Let's check that out. If I click sort pages, there's an option for none, which just means I can manually put them in any order that I want, okay? And when you create a new page in OneNote, you know that it goes to the bottom of the list, all right? I could choose alphabetical, and when I choose alphabetical, that will put all of my pages, not my sections, but my pages in order from top to bottom, okay? So let's take a look at my pages real quick. You see I have corn chowder, uh, I have crystals beef vegetable soup, tomato soup, Mexican chicken, rotisserie chicken, uh, crock pot chicken, and coconut corn soup, okay? So I've got lots of C's all jumbled in there. Let's go through and, and uh, organize those alphabetically and see how that looks, okay? So I'm gonna click on alphabetical and you see very quickly it put all of those perfectly in alphabetical order, okay? The other options would be uh, for alphabetical is going from the bottom to the top. So let's see what that looks like. Now you see tomato soup is on the bottom and all of the uh, C recipes are down at the bottom. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's a new feature in OneNote. Haven't had that for a long time. Also sorting pages, you can go by the date created. Okay, so the most recent recipe that I have in here is my coconut corn soup with chili crisp. Man, if you like coconut vegan soup, this is really good. It was an article that came from the Washington Post and I really love it. And I put this in there in August of 2022. My oldest recipe in here is my uh, Mexican chicken, which you see is from 2012. So I have been using this quite a while, okay? So you can do, again, ascending or descending order for date created. Same with date modified, meaning if you went in and changed something on the page, okay? I'm gonna go back to alphabetical because I think that is super uh, and a great way to do that. Let's check out this next section. Okay, so here you see uh, in my salad section, again, you see I've taken a picture of a page that was in my great big binder over there. And you see I have already organized this in alphabetical order. So I start at the top with my ambrosia salad, which again is an old recipe that I put in in 2012, where I just sat down and started typing away uh, one of my mom's recipes. And then I go all the way down to this lovely uh, recipe for a summer layered salad which is delicious as well. And you can see here that uh, this was copied and pasted in, okay? Well, I just uh, hope that you can see that creating these notebooks, whether it's for recipes or, or books that you've read or gardening ideas or projects that you have for work or whatever it might be, um, that OneNote can be really, really, really helpful at organizing information. And they keep adding new features all the time, like the new sort pages um, option, which I know was on the web version for a while. And OneNote is working really hard to take those things from the web version and things from the desktop version and really putting them together to make one great OneNote, which I think is, is absolutely wonderful. So today you've learned lots of things. You've learned how to add recipes or information uh, to a notebook in many ways by printing it directly from the web, by uh, typing it yourself, by taking photographs or screen captures of it. Remember, you can also do PDFs and print PDFs uh, into OneNote. So there's all kinds of ways to get that information in there. And when you do that, you also get to capture those great photographs and stuff uh, that come with the recipe. So I think that's really cool. Okay. All right. Well, I, 
you know, I say this all the time. I just love OneNote. I love the way that you can search. I love the way that you can organize. I love the way that you can annotate. Um, for example, um, one of my favorite recipes uh, that I have made for years and years and years um, is this taco soup recipe right here. And uh, let's see if I can get that without a glare. This taco soup recipe right here is one of our family favorites. And uh, you see, I modified this recipe. I put a little note up here because uh, in 2021, we got a Ninja pressure cooker. And instead of doing it in a crock pot, I now have a little note or an annotation there for what I need to do um, to cook it in the pressure cooker. So pressure cook on high for eight minutes, vent and release after 10 minutes. So, you know, as things change in our world and we get different tools, uh, we need to be able to make those modifications. And being able to do that in OneNote is very, very easy to do. So anyway, I appreciate you joining me today. Uh, if you've learned anything new or you've gotten some inspiration for making your own recipe book, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, I really do appreciate that. And if you have any comments, if you have a favorite recipe that you'd like to share with me, bring it on. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to, to read the recipe and maybe give it a try. Um, if you have any comments about the notebook and how you might set things up differently, uh, leave me a comment. You know, it's nice to learn from each other about the different ways of organizing. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to say thanks again for watching and here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. I use OneNote. Until next time. Okay. Happy cooking. Bye.